Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'd like to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for the North West Durham for bringing this debate to the House. It's very important to be having this debate in view of the crisis in the economy and the wider climate emergency. As someone whose constituency office is located within the magnificent Red Hills, the Miners Hall in Durham, I have the enormous honour of walking past the incredible lodge banners in the corridor on my way into the office. It's a constant reminder of that proud history and what we ought to call and the people who worked in the industry. That history isn't just about, about the buildings or even the gala, but it runs through virtually every village in my constituency. So many families have mining in their blood. And being true to that heritage also means being truthful about that history, because the way the industry was shut down has left huge scars right across the North East. Because, Madam Deputy Speaker, many of the communities across Durham are still feeling the impact of the destruction wrought by Margaret Thatcher's government. People will talk about the closure of pits under previous Labour governments, and of course that did happen. But it was the reasoning behind Margaret Thatcher's closures and the way it was done that really did the damage. Remember, she called the miners the enemy within. So far, I've talked about the history of the coal, of coal in the North East rather than its future. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, I don't think you can plan a future without first understanding the past, mm -hmm. especially the mistakes of the past. Secondly, I have to say honestly that I do not see coal as a fundamental part of Britain's energy future. There are some interesting and worthwhile projects being pursued all over the country and here in the North East. Even in the steel industry, alternatives exist and could be developed if the investment was forthcoming. The electric arc process, therefore, has much lower carbon emission than the blast furnace process, for instance. Under development, we have carbon capture technologies to use the use of hydrogen to reduce iron ore and using biomass instead of coal. Meanwhile, I've had fascinating discussions with researchers at Durham University about geothermal technologies. I'm aware that none of these are definitive solutions, but we have to continue to invest in the research. Madam Deputy Speaker, none of this is ever said to denigrate the past that I have spoken about, when all seemed a beautiful thing and didn't just power cities, towns and villages, it fuelled our communities and gave energy to our movement. However, in 2020, we know that the future is not in the black gold, it's in the new green technologies that will protect our planet for centuries to come. Over the past few years, the Labour Party has worked hard to develop a plan for a green industrial revolution that would transform our economy and energy infrastructure into one that places the planet and the worker at its heart, while creating a million green jobs in the process. The big issue is to provide a lasting foundation for a new energy economy, and we have to learn the lessons from the past. In the North East, the biggest lesson is that you cannot decimate our old industries without anything to replace them. As a society, we didn't invest in the North East in those dark days after the closure of the pits, and we're still paying for that price and the lack of investment now. So I acknowledge there are very short-term needs for the steel industry and coal will be still used in the interim. We must look forward to developing new technologies and fast unless we are to fall back into fiddling while the planet burns. And that means genuine investment, not stick and plasters. Whilst I welcome this debate and the opportunity to discuss these issues, that's where our minds should be focused. This is a long-term solution and hope for our generation. Thank you.